Hello everyone. In this presentation, I would like to talk about cyclic deformation behavior uh, in strain controlled fatigue behavior of titanium alloy Ti64 deposited with direct energy deposition early to manufacturing process. Here is the outline of today's presentation. Firstly, I would like to talk about background and the motivation of this study and I would like to talk about what materials we have built and what AM process we have used. We did some microstructure and strain control fatigue behavior study. So I would like to present those results and comparing with the literature data. And finally, I will close the presentation with some conclusions. Although additive manufacturing process offers many advantages compared to conventionally built manufacturing process, there are some major concerns in additive manufacturing process, which are process inherent defects, such as gas porosity and lack of fusion defects. These sort of defects are mainly observed in powder based processes because of the poor quality of the powder or sometimes because of the process instability and the process parameters. The presence of these defects will act as stress concentration areas when these materials are cyclically loaded and lead to crack initiation and premature failure of these materials. On the other hand, Steep thermal gradient and repeated heating and cooling cycles associated with additive manufacturing process leads to the development of columnar grains, which are generally aligned along the build direction. The presence of these columnar grains will lead to a strong anisotropy in the mechanical properties when they are subjected to monotonic and cyclic loading. Sometimes the presence of these columnar grains also lead to large scatter in the mechanical properties. Therefore, it is essential to understand the process, microstructure and performance relationship of any materials built by additive manufacturing process. Wire and arc additive manufacturing process is a directed energy deposition AM process where wire is used as a raw material either electric arc or plasma arc is used as an energy source. The large deposition rates associated with warm process allows us to build large structural parts which are few meters in size. Some examples are shown here and also we can deposit multiple materials at the same time which allows us to build some novel materials such as functionally graded materials. Similar to other AM processes, warm process also produce materials with columnar grains. However, the in-process cold working developed in the warm process such as rolling and the machine hammer pinning can be applied in order to refine the microstructure and achieve near isotropic mechanical properties. The experimental materials for this study was built using wire and arc additive manufacturing process where we have used plasma arc as energy source and tie 64 wire with 1.2 millimeter diameter was used as raw material the other process parameters were also given here on the right hand side you will see a schematic representation of the wall we have built for this study the entire wall was built with a local shielding of argon gas during the deposition we have used an oscillation build strategy developed for warm process where the plasma touch and the wire feeder was oscillated across the wall thickness direction with a 50% overlap between the melt tracks. The microstructure features observed in warm Ti64 are similar to what we have seen in the other AM processes. The steep thermal gradient and low solute partitioning of Ti64 alloy which restricting the constitutional supercooling resulting in columnar grains which are aligned along the build direction. However, in some cases, we have also observed some near equiaxid primary beta grains. Overall, the, the width of the primary beta grains is ranging between 0.4 to 3.2 millimeter 
which shows there is a large microstructure heterogeneity. When compared with the literature, we can see that one thai 6 4 primary beta grain width is much wider. Uh, this is mainly due to the heat source is raster across the wall width, resulting in low heat dissipation and much lower cooling rate and forming much wider primary beta grains. Further high magnification images of microstructure is shown here. These builds consist of either basket view microstructure or colony microstructure, which is formed due to lower cooling rates. Some of the prior beta grains have a continuous grain boundary alpha, where a large colony microstructure is decorated on either side of these grain boundary alpha. However, there are some prior beta grains where we did not observe a continuous grain boundary alpha and we have seen that basket weave microstructure is decorated on either side of these grain boundary alpha. When we looked at the tensile properties, uh, we can clearly notice that the, the strong anisotropy in the microstructure is influenced the mechanical properties. Here, the horizontal samples show the lower ductility compared to the vertical sample. This is mainly because the tensile load is perpendicular to prior beta grain short axis in the horizontal sample leading to premature failure. However, when we compared the yield strength and the tensile strength, horizontal samples actually showed marginally higher yield strength and the tensile strength compared to the vertical sample. When we compared the data from this study with the conventionally built rod, cast, and ASTM requirement, we can see that warm Thai 64 has higher yield and tensile strength compared to the cast material and comparable properties with the rod. When we looked at the ductility compared to the cast, warm Thai 64 has 2.8 times higher ductility and 1.4 times higher ductility than the ASTM requirements. This slide shows cyclic deformation behavior of warm built Thai 64 in horizontal and the vertical orientation. By comparing the first cycle and the stabilized cycle hysteresis loop, it is apparent that this material is showing cyclic softening behavior, which is generally observed in Thai 64 alloys. We have also noticed there is a small tension and compression asymmetry, which is also known as the Bauschinger effect, where the absolute tensile stress and the absolute compression stress are not equal. When we looked at the stabilized cycle hysteresis loop between horizontal and vertical samples, we can immediately notice that vertical sample had a wider hysteresis loop area which is due to the higher ductility uh, in this orientation, which we have seen in our previous slide. This slide presents the total strain amplitude versus fatigue life in reversals for horizontal and vertical samples. I have highlighted the low cycle fatigue regime and the high cycle fatigue regime. When we compared the horizontal and vertical sample, we can observe that the vertical samples are actually showing marginally higher fatigue performance when the applied strains are in the low cycle fatigue regime. However, when the applied strains are in the high cycle fatigue regime, we don't see any variation and the influence of anisotropy microstructure on the fatigue performance. When we compared our data with the literature, we can see that the warm built Thai 64 shows marginally lower fatigue performance than the rot mill annealed material. Uh, this is mainly due to the higher ductility associated with the rot microstructure, which, which consists of bimodal microstructure. However, when compared the warm Thai 64 properties, with the laser engineered net shaping, 
uh, we can see that both AM processes are showing similar fatigue performance. On the other hand, SLM shows slightly higher fatigue performance. This is again due to the martensitic microstructure, which has a higher yield strength in this SLM materials. After failure, we have studied the fracture surfaces of all the samples and notice that the crack initiation occurred from a microstructure feature in all the samples, both in horizontal and vertical orientation. We haven't found any defects on the fracture surfaces. That means there are, there are no defects in this build and it is a fully dense material. When we studied the fracture surfaces in crack propagation regime, we have noticed large number of secondary cracks, which is the result of the large colony microstructure present in this build, which leads to secondary crack formation when subjected to cyclic loading. To conclude our study, we have seen that lower heat dissipation and slower cooling rate in warm process resulted in wider primary beta grains consisting of large colonies and basket weave microstructure. The strong anisotropy in this build actually resulted in anisotropic tensile properties where horizontal samples show 12% higher yield strength and tensile strength compared to vertical. However, because of the premature failure of horizontal sample along the grain boundary alpha, they have resulted in 40% lower ductility. There is a marginal anisotropy in the strain control fatigue behavior when the applied strain amplitudes are in the low cycle fatigue regime where horizontal samples had lower fatigue strength, possibly due to lower ductility. Both sample orientation showed cyclic softening behavior, which is generally observed in these materials. Upon investigating the fracture surfaces, uh, we have noticed that our crack initiation always occurred from a microstructure features, and we haven't found any defects on the fracture surfaces. Finally, we have found large secondary cracks on the fracture surfaces, which is the consequence of the colony microstructure which leads to secondary crack formation in these builds. Finally, we would like to thank EPSRC for supporting this research through the new one program grant. I would like to thank our project partners, Cranfield University, University Staff Light, and the University of Manchester. Thank you for your attention.